Hello, I'm Anika from Made to Sew and welcome to our super easy bunting tutorial. Now in this little tutorial we want to show you how to make this lovely bunting that's finished with pinking shears. It's really really easy to do so it's perfect if you're a complete beginner or relatively new to sewing but it's also great for those of you that maybe want to whiz up loads of bunting really quickly because this is super quick and easy. So let's get started. Let's start by going through the material that you'll need to create the bunting. First thing is fabric. We're working with this lovely Liberty Tana Lawn. However, you can use anything um, and you can also use some of your scraps from your scrap box if you want to. We're going to be working with nine pennants, so nine of these triangles, as we've found that that has worked well with the length of bias binding that we'll be using. 2.5 meters. If you want to do more pennants that's not a problem however you will probably need a longer length of bias binding and obviously the number of pennants that you have will determine how much fabric you need so you'll have to have a little look and see what you're working with. Now we finished the sides of our pennants with pinking shears to stop the fabric from fraying so if you've got a pair of pinking shears that's fabulous. Then the bias binding we're using, as I mentioned, is 2.5 meters in length. The width of this is one inch, 2.5 centimeters. You'll need some coordinating thread, and you will need a pattern. Now you can download the pattern that we've created, and we'll put a link to that in the description box below, or you can draw out one of these. Now the pattern we've got here, is seven and a half inches across the top, which is 19 centimeters, and eight and a half inches down to the point, which is 21 centimeters. I would recommend drawing this out on paper or card because we are going to draw around this for ease. Then finally, the other thing you will need is some kind of marking implement. So that can be chalk, or that can be a removable pen. This one comes off with water. You can get some that come off with air or even a pencil will do. So I will let you collect your supplies and then we can come back here to cut out. Now you have your pattern piece for the pennant or the triangle and place that onto your fabric. If you've downloaded a pattern piece from the website, I would recommend cutting it out of paper or of card to make this process of drawing round easier. One thing to think about here, if you have a patterned fabric and a pattern that goes in one direction, like these little animals here, you need to make sure that you position your pattern piece onto the fabric in the same direction with the point pointing down all of the time. Okay. So we're positioning this onto the fabric wrong side and we're going to take a pen or a piece of chalk, anything that we can actually draw around this. And we're literally just going to draw around the edge of the pattern piece, going around the whole piece of the pattern until you've got the markings drawn onto your fabric. I will let you do that and obviously you can do that for all of the pieces that you want to do at once. If you're working with a plain fabric then to save your fabric you can actually flip the pattern piece and position them up like this. Obviously as we discussed if you're working with a pattern you may not wish to do that especially if your pattern has got a print that needs to be going in the same direction. So mark all of your triangles onto your fabric now and then join me back here so we can cut them out. So now we're going to cut them out and I find it easier to cut them out with a normal pair of scissors before we actually work with the pinking shears. The top edge you're going to be able to cut out along the chalk line or the drawn line that you drew and we can cut straight along that line. Now for the other lines all we're going to do here is cut very very close to them. Now this can be about half an inch um, to a quarter of an inch, so about a centimetre away will be fine. And that's just going to relieve the pennant or the triangle from the fabric so that we can focus on getting the pinking shears and the little triangles that the pinking shears will, cre will create very, very accurate. So if I move this so that you can see it. So now I'm going to be cutting, as I said, about a half an inch to a quarter of an inch away from our drawn line 
all the way down this side, all the way up the other side, so that the triangle or pennant is ready for us to use the pinking shears on. I will let you do that to all of your pieces, then you can join me back here and I'll show you how to use the pinking shears. Now to complete the pinking or the cutting with the pinking shears of our little pennants, we want to start at the top side here. Obviously the wrong side of our fabric will be facing up because that is where our line or our markings will be. If you start at this top edge here, you'll be easily able to make sure that you've got a really neat finish with the pinking shears. We'll travel down this side, then turning at the bottom and back up the other side. So now we're working down the first side of the triangle. As we're cutting with the pinking shears, we're making sure that the little triangles on the pinking shears scissors are going to actually hit the line that we drew for the edge of our triangle. And as we then open up the scissors to cut the next row, we're going to realign the little triangles on the pinking shears with the little triangles that we have previously cut. Now this is being really pernickety, making sure that you've got a really nice finish to your bunting. If you're in a rush, you could by all means go ahead and cut them much quicker. So now we've created the tip at the bottom here. We're going to turn this around so that we can go back up the other side. Creating a nice point at the bottom. Again, lifting up realigning the pinking shears with the triangles and making sure that the edge of the triangles on the scissors is lining up with the line that we drew on the fabric. Complete that all the way back till you hit the top of the second side and then we'll show you how to attach the bunting together. So now that you have finished all of your pennants with the pinking shears, we're ready to place them into the bias binding. You will need to consider in which order you want to place your pennants in the bias. And obviously that is up to you, you're the designer in this situation. Here is an example of one that we've made previously, and we've got four different colours of Liberty fabric here, and we've placed them consecutively in this order. However, what we're planning on doing with our ones here is to have our printed one in between our two block colours. And obviously we will need more of the printed pennant because that will be mirrored in between the two block colours all the way through. So have a think, obviously this will depend on whether you've got all of one colour, two colours, three colours, four colours or more. But it's really up to you how you wish to position your pennants in the bias. Now you're happy with the order of your pennants, we're going to position them into the bias binding. Now we know that the nine pennants are going to sit happily in our bias binding that we've got here. We've decided on the gap that we want between the pennants, three quarters of an inch, two centimetres. Obviously that is to your choice as well. And we know that we'll be left with a little bit of bias binding left over at either end so that we can tie it onto something. Now to make sure that we get our pennants and our triangles in the right place, in the centre of the bias, we need to find the centre of the bias binding. So we've folded it in half and on the fold here we've positioned a little pin to know that that is the centre point. Now we're going to do the same for the centre pennant. Okay, we know that the purple piece here is going to be our central pennant. So we're folding that in half and again on the fold line we're going to position a little pin on the edge and we're going to be able to match these two pins up to make sure that it's in the right place. So. We're going to match them both up now and then we'll have our centres together. Now you've got your centres together, we're going to take out the pins and we're going to start to wrap the bias around the pennants. Okay, you want to have the right side of the fabric facing up at all times here and you want to try to aim to put the edge or the top edge of your pennant at a halfway point in the bias binding. And we're literally just going to wrap the bias on top like this. Now, you want to use a pin, and you want to be pinning about an eighth, three millimeters, from the edge of the bias binding. 
and you want to try and make sure that this is going through on the back at the same place as it is on the front. It might take a little bit of practice, but this is what will make your sewing along here really, really smart and really neat. Obviously, you will need quite a few pins to make sure that it is in the right position. So gradually work your way along our middle on our first pennant that we're going to do, pinning it. Join me back here and I'll show you how to add the other pennants in. So now we're working our way along our bunting and pinning in the bias binding. Now we're going to get to a place where we need one of our pennants to join up to the next pennant and we want to make sure that the gap between the two pennants is even all the way through our bunting because it does just look better. So we've decided to work with a three quarters of an inch gap However, again, that's two centimetres, sorry. Again, you can, you know, work with what you want. If you want to make sure that they are butt at the top, then you're more than welcome to do so. So we're going to be measuring from the point edge here, three quarters of an inch with the ruler, until the point edge of the next one. So actually, when the bias is folded down here, you will see that it looks like there is more than three quarters of an inch because obviously we are working with a triangle. But as long as we're consistent, that's absolutely fine. And again, we're going to use the pin to fasten that in place. And pinning the rest of this triangle here. Obviously use as many pins as you like. And you can use whatever pins you like. If you prefer the ones with the heads, then that's not a problem at all. Okay, folding this one over and pinning this one. And when you've got a gap, what you want to make sure, and the gap by this, I mean a gap here, so there's none of the pennant or the triangle there, you want to make sure that the bias sits really nicely on top of each other so that you can't see the underside from the front. If anything, the underside can be a little bit shorter than the front side. The front side is what's obviously most important. So I'm just going to let you work your way all the way down the length of the bunting. And this may take a little bit of time, pinning all of your pennants in place. Join me back here when you get to the end and I will show you what to do then. So now we've got to our last pennant here. So how do we finish off the tail end of our bias? We're going to fold it in half and we're going to place a pin about an eighth, three millimetres in from the edge again. And again here we want to make sure that the back and the front piece of the bias are either sitting flush or that the front is extending ever so slightly so that we cannot see the back. That's the most important thing, that from the front you cannot see the back. And we're just going to work our way along and again you'll probably need a few more pins than maybe usual, just to make sure you're really holding everything nice and neatly. And we're nearly at the end here. Okay. Okay, and as we get to the end here, what do we need to do here? Well, we need to turn this end under. And I would turn it under by about half an inch, which is say one centimeter for ease, okay? So under by half an inch, one centimetre, and then we're gonna fold the bias in half again. Just like that. And what you want to really want to make sure of here is that you get rid of any sort of nasty edges that could fray in there. Okay, so it's a little bit tricky, and you really just want to tuck it all up inside. There we go, just like that. One more pin here, and I would, you know, use more pins, as I said, than you normally need to, just to make sure that you're really holding everything nice and firm and nothing's going to go walkies when we sew this. So pin all the way along, finish off your two ends nicely, attach all of the pennants in, and then I will join you at the sewing machine. Now we're going to start sewing the bias binding that we've pinned really carefully in the last step. Now we want to sew about one eighth away from the edge of the binding here. Now on my foot here I've got a tiny little nook that I can line the fold edge of the bias to make sure that I am sewing one eighth away. So hopefully you'll have something on your machine that you can use as a guide too. Now we're going to start right at the end here 
Make sure that those that folded back end is really tucked under and we're going to start by holding onto the threads and putting our needle in and the foot down and obviously we will take the pins out as we go. Now we're going to complete a forward and backward stitch to start or obviously you can do a lock stitch and then we're going to sew along and mine's just moving a little bit there we go it'll move a little bit maybe to start because you've only got a small amount of the bias underneath the foot so you have to be very careful with how you're guiding in and once you start going you'll be absolutely fine now we're just sewing here a normal straight stitch with the stitch length of 2.5 millimeters but two 2.5 millimeter length will be perfect and we're going to complete this all the way along here until we get to the pennants that we've pinned in or the triangles that we've pinned in and obviously just really here watch this fold and where it is on the foot so that you're really accurate with your stitching um, and obviously make sure that you're not watching the needle because it doesn't matter where the needle is it just matters where this is in relation to the guide on the foot so we're coming up to one of the pennants here and again we're just going to hold this nice and flat taking the pins out as we go once I've taken a pin out I tend to really hold this with my finger to make sure that nothing's going to budge and that my bias on the back side is going to be as neat as it is on the front all the way along this pennant edge and obviously I'll let you continue this all the way until you get to the other edge of your bias binding when you get to the edge you'll go backwards and forwards again or lock the stitch and then we'll trim our threads and there you have it some beautiful bunting <laughs> 